In this video, I'll briefly cover the equitable doctrine of breach of confidence. Breach of confidence is a pretty important doctrine. It's the doctrine that pr uh, protects all sorts of interests from some privacy interests to confidential information and trade secrets. It's a non-contractual remedy that can protect development ideas or patentable information, for example, and it also sometimes operates as a quasi-privacy right. Now, because it's an equitable doctrine, it's not as straightforward as enforcing a contractual non-disclosure agreement, for example. So it's usually better, when possible, to ensure that a non-disclosure agreement is in place. But in some cases, the doctrine of breach of confidence can prevent the disclosure of confidential or secret information. There are three main elements to an action for breach of confidence. The first is that the information must be confidential. The second, because equity binds the conscience, is that the information must have been disclosed in circumstances that give rise to an obligation of confidence. And the third is disclosure or threatened disclosure of the information. The first element is that the information must actually be confidential. Now, absolute secrecy is not required, but the information can't be widely, widely known or in the public domain. It has to have some sort of characteristic of confidence. confidence. Absolute secrecy is not required, but the information can't be publicly available or in the public domain. Importantly, information that is only disclosed subject to contractual non-disclosure agreements, for example, will still maintain the character of confidence, even though more people know it than just the owner of the confidential information. Whether information is actually protected by the breach of confidence action depends upon this crucial characteristic of confidence. And the courts will look to all of the circumstances of the case to determine how widely the information is known, what sort of measures were taken to protect or secure it, how important it is, how many people outside and inside the organization know about it, and so on and so on, in order to come to a conclusion as to whether or not the information has the requisite quality of confidence to be protected. The breach, of action, the breach of confidence action protects not only trade secrets, but it can also be used to protect some private information in some cases. So, for example, in the 1967 case of Argyle and Argyle, the Duchess of Argyle was able to prevent her ex-husband from revealing some intimate details of their relationship through the breach of confidence action. But once information has entered the public domain, its character of confidence is lost. So in Commonwealth and Fairfax, for example, there were diplomatic cables that were leaked to Fairfax and published. And as soon as the cables are published, they have lost their characteristic of confidence. They are no longer confidential information because they are now in the public domain. This wasn't about the WikiLeaks cables, this is much longer ago. But again, very similarly to recent events, the government of the day was embarrassed by the content of its diplomatic communications, and it sought to suppress the publication of those cables. It lost that case on the basis that the cables were no longer Pub, no longer confidential information after they had been published. And an injunction, therefore, is not available to restrain the ongoing or further publication of the confidential or previously confidential information. The second element of the breach of confidence action is that the information must be disclosed in circumstances that give rise to an, act, to an obligation of confidence. So because this is an equitable action, it binds the conscience of the people who receive the information. So normally, when a person comes across information and is outside of any contractual or other obligations to keep it secret, they're allowed to disclose it. Breach of confidence as an equitable action will only bind the conscience of the person who receives the information in circumstances where it would be reasonable to expect that the information was confidential and was transmitted 
under an obligation that it must remain confidential. So the test is whether the reasonable person would have recognised that the information was given under an obligation of confidence. The obligation doesn't only arise in relation to established or defined relationships. So there's Obiter in the Spycatcher case, for example, where um, that suggests that people who stumble across private information that is obviously confidential might have an obligation to refrain from further publishing or using that information. There are two important cases where breach of confidence was used to protect the um, privacy rights of celebrities. So Douglas and Hello, for example, um, Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones were able to prevent people from surreptitiously taking photos at their wedding and then publishing those in a magazine. The other example is that of Naomi Campbell. And in this case, Photographers had surreptitiously obtained photos of Naomi Campbell entering a Narcotics Anonymous venue. Now this would normally give rise to an obligation of confidence, but it was in the end in the public interest to see the disclosure of this information because Naomi Campbell had held herself out to be clean and opposed to drug use. So the fact that she had built up a public persona based on this was sufficient to justify the otherwise um, objectionable publication of the confidential information. The third and final element is that there has been unauthorised use or threatened use of the information. This includes use without consent or use beyond the scope or limited purpose that was the, for which the information was given. Intention is not a relevant element to a breach of this obligation. The plaintiff does need to show harm as a result of the use or threatened use of the information, but this is usually pretty easy to show. So for example, the loss of the ability to exploit the secret information, or the embarrassment that might arise, or the criticism that might arise from the disclosure of the personal or private confidential information will be sufficient to show that the defendant has been sorry, that the plaintiff has been harmed by the actual or threatened disclosure. The strongest defence for an action of breach of confidence is that of justification. And this is where there is just cause or other reason that would justify the disclosure or use of the confidential information. This might in some cases mean that the disclosure is in, public, in the public interest, although that's strongest with relation to um, government secrets and less so with, re with regards to private information in Australia. As an equitable remedy, it's also possible for the defendant to show that the plaintiff does not come to the court with clean hands. The unclean hands defence prevents plaintiffs from bringing an action for breach of confidence in circumstances where it would not be conscionable to give for the court to order relief. So this can operate as a, sort of an equivalent form of a public interest test or defence and prevent, for example, a plaintiff from using the breach of confidence action to hide wrongdoing or information that would be um, important for the public to know. The most important remedy for a breach of confidence action is an injunction. This prevents the continued or threatened disclosure of the confidential information. Plaintiffs can also seek damages or account of profits, but it's an injunction, particularly at the preliminary and then again at final stages, that plaintiffs really want. This sometimes backfires. You might want to beware the Streisand effect, for example, where you know, efforts to contain the flow of information sometimes lead to a very strong impulse of the public to ensure that the information is as widely known as possible. So it's important to think very carefully before actually using the action of breach of confidence to try to stop this type of information. Sometimes it's better just to let it uh, settle by itself.